Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here on a relatively quiet news day for Tesla, although the stock had a strong day. We're going to be talking about new firmware 2020.44, and then a little bit of news on Tesla's pilot line for 4680 cell production. We will start off with the stock though, Tesla today finishing up 5.8% to $423.90, really taking us back into the range that we've been in for the last couple of weeks, despite that short dip down to the $380 level. Now back to about 424 is right in the midpoint of where Tesla closed on Wednesday, October 21st before earnings, and then Thursday, October 22nd after earnings. That 5.8% gain today did outperform the NASDAQ, which also had a strong day, up 1.9%. And despite the larger increase for Tesla, the two graphs look relatively similar in terms of when the gains came. As for the reason for Tesla's overperformance, I think just insert whatever speculative reason you want. All right, let's talk about the new firmware. This is version 2020.44, a couple of new features in here. Don't get too excited though, it's not anything to do with expansion of the full self-driving beta. This is a general update, mainly dealing with autopilot speed settings as well as media control. And it's still in the very early stages of rolling out. Teslify.com has it at about 2% of the fleet that they track so far. So the first change here is autopilot set speed. And according to the release notes, quote, you can now change the autopilot set speed by adjusting controls autopilot set speed to one of the following options. Speed limit, which will set the cruise speed to the speed limit of the road and will adjust either to the set speed offset that is specified or to the current driving speed, whichever is greater. The set speed offset can be configured to a fixed speed for all roads or to a percentage that will vary based on the speed limit of the road. Current speed will set the cruise speed to the current driving speed, end quote. So this is one of the things that I'll look forward to understanding better once I'm actually an owner, but my understanding is that the fixed speed and the percentage speed are the big differences here. So for example, I believe currently you can set a fixed speed offset of let's say plus five miles per hour from the speed limit. So if you're in a 75 mile per hour zone, it would move you up to 80. If you're in a 25 mile per hour zone, it would move you up to 30. So in the first case, you're going over the speed limit by about 7%. And in the second case, you're going over the speed limit by 20%. So it sounds like now you could actually just change that. And let's say it's 7% in both cases, then you're going 27 instead of 30 miles per hour in that 25 mile per hour zone. As for the rest of the updates, teslascope.com lists those out. I think the big one a lot of people will be excited about are improvements to Spotify. The release notes say, quote, Spotify has been updated to make it easier to find and play content from your library, which now also includes collaborative playlists and podcasts, end quote. So hopefully that helps out some of you that do listen to Tesla Daily via Spotify in your vehicle. They've also added gapless playback to Spotify, which will just remove that short little pause in between tracks. That's helpful for live albums or albums like Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. They've also added a Spotify home tab and improved the syncing capabilities with other devices. In general, media search has been improved. It looks like that design is much cleaner now. And Tesla has also added the capability to show and hide different media sources, such as radio, streaming, Spotify, etc. Specifically for Model S and Model X Raven performance versions, there have been some improvements made to launch mode. And finally, some flexibility has been added to voice command. You can now use a different setting for voice command than you have displayed on the touch screen. So those are the official updates. And then diving into the more speculative realm, we'll go back to Green the Only on Twitter, who digs into the firmware a little bit more, always finding some things under the covers. So on Twitter today, he said, quote, hmm, 2020.44 also ships with a new firmware file for CYW89359, which happens to be Cypress Automotive 802.11ac Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth solution, currently shipping with Broadcom BCM4349. Some additional breadcrumbs pointing at an upcoming 5G modem support. Connectivity suite update soon. And then continues on to say, quote, and there's additional bandwidth usage monitoring added and a curious mothership option to ask cars to, quote, collect hotspot info, end quote. Hotspot might really appear in foreseeable future, end quote. So to make sense of all of that, Green is saying that there are some references here that may indicate potential future inclusion for 5G support. That is 5G cell service, not 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And then he's also saying there's potentially some capability there to include hotspotting. So as far as 5G goes, obviously that was the big inclusion hardware-wise on the iteration of the iPhone this year. Apple there using the marketing handle of 5G just got real. So for Tesla, just because there may be some references here to something that facilitates that in the future, doesn't mean that'll actually happen, but I'm sure Green will be keeping an eye out for any future references. And once we start seeing some deliveries of the most recent updates on Tesla's vehicles, maybe we'll start to learn a little bit more on that as well. All right, next today is just a quick story on Tesla's internal cell production. 
There's a report from teslameg.de that a German engineering company, Sarasig Engineering, has been helping Tesla out with some of their cell production equipment, both for the pilot line in Fremont, as well as eventually the projects in Gigafactory Berlin and Giga Texas. So obviously a few years ago we had the Groman acquisition, we just heard about the ATW acquisition, I don't know, last month or so. Now we've got Sarasig helping out. Tesla certainly loves their German engineering. I think the only other thing for today, Elon responded to a tweet from Bloomberg's John Ehrlichman, who says, quote, on this day in 2008, Tesla secures a $40 million loan to avoid bankruptcy. Today, it is the most valuable automaker in the world, end quote. Elon replied to that, sharing a little bit more detail on that situation, basically talking about how that final funding round came on sort of the last possible hour. And really, the funding round was able to be completed because Elon showed the conviction by putting pretty much everything he possibly could into it, which helped give the confidence to those other investors. It's just pretty remarkable how close Tesla was to not being able to succeed. You know, we've seen a similar story from SpaceX, and Elon shared in a series of other tweets a little bit more about that journey on the Tesla side, including the pain during the Model 3 ramp up and how close Tesla was to bankruptcy at that point in time. We've talked about that. I think Tesla would have been able to get more funds than if they needed to but did just want to point those tweets out if you happen to miss them and want a little bit more detail on that time period. Otherwise, that is it for today. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday, November 4th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.